Hello, my name is Matteo and in this video we're going to talk about the widget registry and how we're going to going to cover how to get a registry up and going and also how to um, configure your own and what it, this is for. So uh, we left it off at having this example calculator project. I have it running here and to recap uh, we build a JavaScript app that with the integrated tooling it creates a demo page that you can preview things in. But uh, this is for this particular project. All the projects I might not uh, have that demo page and that would be fine as well. As long as they have in GitHub releases the source code being published as a release, uh, then everything is good. And why do I say that? Because having that uh, preview demo is very useful. And indeed it is. And I think it's uh, very important to have like this, the concept of previewing in context of a web page, like uh, making sure that everyone understands that this is not the this is not the application, the page application, but an application that gets embedded. And that's the, uh, the main concept behind uh, progressive decoupling. And in the, in the widget registry, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to, again, clone. Oh, it was signed out again. Hang on a sec. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to fork this uh, boilerplate example. So this contains uh, an example that kind of will give you an idea of what you can do. And uh, some of the features are just optional, but I think that they are very nice to have. Uh, like, for instance, we are going to have in here all of our widgets or JavaScript apps listed, the ones that we want to make available and the version that we want to pull in because you might be working on a new version and you're not ready to pull it in. So it's not published to the to the registry. So since we have a we have a listing of all the JavaScript apps that we're going to be embedding, uh, this project by default comes with something called the uh, registry catalog and uh, also comes with the concept of environments, a sandbox and a production environment. The sandbox environment would be a registry that lets you see what's coming up or what you have uh, in deck, the new versions of the widgets that you have uh, or maybe even new widgets into it and the production one. This is the one that you would be having uh, running in your project uh, in live for users to use. So this, uh, the catalog is just a single page application uh, with static data uh, being served by GitHub pages and uh, it explains a little bit what are widgets, what are the principles behind those widgets. Again, these will be forked under your user or organization and therefore you can change anything uh, in here. You can get rid of these uh, landing pages um, or you can change the, uh, you can change everything. Um, but in, in particular, I'm interested in showing this. Uh, there is a, here, uh, this is the catalog. Uh, it lets you search by, I don't know, let's say calculator. Uh, this is very useful when you have many different widgets and gives, the, gives you the little bit of a description. Uh, this description is short, but uh, hopefully you can come up with something more useful and some interesting links are linked to the, uh, to the demo page that I just showed and uh, to the repository and then a more details uh, link. If you click more lead details, it will ingest or it will detect all of the information that is relevant to this to, to this widget and that is that we added a thumbnail and this is a, an SVG that uh, when we are embedding this, let's say, uh, in the WYSIWYG as an entity embed inside of Drupal in the body field, uh, we could just have 
Drupal render this as a means to have inside of the the CK editor in the WYSIWYG, uh, you could just show uh, this to indicate that you're embedding a calculator instead of having uh, just a broken link or a, a preview of the calculator. Um, it gives you information about the version, the status of the of the widget, and the external dependencies. This is useful if you are developing uh, integrations for this. Uh, so you have to remember to, as we talked about, uh, add React and React DOM to the page, and you can uh, see uh, which are the links that are recommended for for this widget. So uh, digging through here, there's a kind of a an example on, of a code snippet you could put inside of your inside of the uh, of the static HTML that you're embedding, or uh, you can uh, just look at the demo video that is linked here. But uh, most importantly, there is a live preview. So if you go to this last tab, this uh, single page application will actually embed the widget, so you can use it. Uh, so you can see here how I have a calculator that is usable and I also have the live preview for the emoji search and you can just use it. I just clicked to copy um, etc. So it is, um, it is a nice way to have under control all of the widgets that your organization has because the widget registry plays a fundamental role in the governance of your project. Uh, let me go back here. Uh, the governance of your project being that you are the one that are the... Uh, le let me back, back up on that. That was... Um, Locked again. All right, let me save that. Anytime, I... all right, sorry. Anytime I, I navigate away from, uh, from GitHub completely, then it deletes my cookies, and that's why. Um, I'll keep window open so that that doesn't happen again. Uh, so for governance, uh, since all of the changes to the registry are going to be made using a pull request in here, like uh, let's imagine that we want to, uh, we saw how here in the catalog, the boiler, uh, sorry, the calculator is uh, considered work in progress. So let's change that. Let's uh, make sure that this is considered stable and we'll change the status to stable. And we'll follow the, the process of um, making a change on the, on the registry. So I'm gonna open up the example calculator here and gonna make the changes here through the UI, but uh, you can do uh, can imagine that you're changing code and you're doing the whole uh, PR process. Uh, so I'm gonna just edit this file. I'm gonna set this stable, and then I'm gonna say that I want to create a new branch and do um, a fix to make widget stable. I like to use the uh, the same commit structure and branch name uh, structure so I, I can get more integrations and uh, conventions out of that. So I'm going to use make widget stable. If I had a ticket here, I would use the ticket name, but that will have to go. All right, I created a PR. With that only change, I'm gonna go ahead and just merge it. So that will kick off the CI process. You can see 
that and since I use the fix commit prefix uh, it will generate 1.0.7 and once that's done we'll be able to come here and uh, do 1.0.7 and do something like um, make the call terrace table. So gonna uh, I'm gonna do that uh, in a minute, but um, but. But first, we need to let this uh, let this finish. So imagine that you have different teams, right? Uh, your project has a, a team dedicated to working on this JavaScript application, the example calculator, and they are cranking out fixes. And some releases are being generated uh, as part of the uh, of the fix process or building new features, etc. Someone else completely can come and go to your registry and then make a PR. So by creating a PR to the to this file uh, metadata registry to JSON, they are asking to publish this version in here. If you were to uh, create a um, a new widget completely. You would just copy this and adapt as necessary. So in here you can use the repository URL for a with uh, sorry a GitHub repository that uses GitHub releases. And then the widget registry will figure out how to download the code, or you could just put directly the tarball URL in here and that would be something like your server.com and then the example emojis 1.0.4.tar.gz or whatever naming structure that you, that you want to use. Um, the point is that you don't have to use GitHub, it just has some a lot of nice integrations that uh, justifies the use of it but these two keys are mandatory oops sorry these two keys are mandatory this key here can be either repository URL if you're using github with github releases and or tar, uh, tarball URL if you want to just have your build process and uh, import for wherever from wherever uh, you wanna you want to import so Hopefully this is oops, finishing. Yes, we created version 1.0.7. So I'm going to head cancel this and head back. And this PR should be ready to go. All right. So uh, what we are doing here is uh, let's imagine that the project manager of the calculator team comes here, makes the pull request against the uh, registry. The, the registry could be managed by some other team. And what this means is that they are letting you publish the, the new versions. And here is where they would go and vet these, uh, these changes. And that's why it's important to have a demo page for for each one of the of the projects because now they can come here and see all right uh, version 3.7 uh, let's go and see the demo and and they can play with it and kind of QA it and validate it and they can come here and see uh, the uh, the diff using using GitHub and then say all right this looks good. Actually, I'm going to give the thumbs up. And I cannot appro approve my own pull request. But you can imagine how this like would play out with different people working on this. It doesn't have to be just by yourself.
or hopefully it is not just by yourself. So, but anyways, uh, for the sake of the example, I'm gonna merge this down and gonna delete the branch just to keep things clean. And this is gonna uh, get going. So while that uh, happens, uh, I'm gonna back up to the beginning and I'm gonna say, this is a template project that I'm using as the example, but what you'll need to do is come here, JS widget, JS uh, registry boilerplate, and click this button, uh, use this template. And uh, let's actually create this one. Uh, I'm gonna go to widget registry video demo, right? And I'm gonna create it. So what this is going to do is it's gonna clone the this template or this repo in this other repo. And it will give me the same base branch, right? It will not give me all of the branches. Uh, what that means is that I will not get the GitHub pages branch with all the uh, catalog published to it, and uh, you'll have to fix the links because you see here this uh, linking to the original or the project that, uh, you, that you cloned from. Uh, so then go ahead and change any references to the original repo and make sure that you make sure that you go and uh, enable github pages once you have uh, that github pages branch and that github pages branch will appear the first time that you run ci so let's do that because our first change here actually uh, this is already uh, going but our first change is going to be let's get rid of the example of the examples and I'm gonna just get rid of uh, these two because I want to have something to to show actually, uh, and this kind of gives you a hint that you don't have to own these projects in order to be able to publish them to your registry. Like many companies could work on different JavaScript uh, applications, and they could put them inside of their registry. Imagine that your company contributes to the community a kick-ass emoji selector like we did or something um, something else entirely that eases the editorial experience for uh, for Drupal and they publish it as a, uh, as a React application, as a widget. Then they could just talk about it, blog about it and invite other companies to just put that inside of their registry and so that's that's what we'll, we'll do but in here I'm gonna just back it up a little bit and we should see this as a work in progress because uh, we made made it stable in version 7 so let's do fits um, remove necessary widgets and I'm gonna commit directly to the sandbox branch. All right, cool. Uh, so uh, what we have here is if we go to GitHub Actions. Uh, this is still running uh, the first commit. Um, so we kind of leave it, I, I wanna kind of leave it here. Uh, just make sure to add your GitHub pages uh, to enable GitHub pages uh, using the the GitHub pages branch, and, and that should be that should be it. It will start creating that uh, widget catalog for you, and you can go here and edit the oops, sorry, edit the catalog. If you wanna uh, change the home page, then you can just go here and 
edit the uh, the application. I'll leave that up to you. So that's all I wanted to do with this uh, with this repo. Show you how you can fork and start adapting for yourself and uh, make this your own. But back to here, this already. Oops. Uh, back to here. This should have already finished. Hopefully, yes, this is already finished. And uh, we made the calculator stable, so we're going to go here in the sandbox and widget types. And uh, oh, this. Hmm. I wonder if this is because of. Because of caching, I'm going to do a hard refresh. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it was uh, due to caching. Um, because GitHub pages will have a cache for the JSON object that's power for, uh, powering this um, this data. So, um, alrighty. Uh, so if we come here, we see that it's stable and everything should uh, still work. Yes, it still does the math correctly, as computers do. So, we have been able to register the sorry register the ca uh, the calculator inside of the widget registry and there are these two links here and this is the registry feed or the json file for the registry and contains three the three entries for the three widget types uh, and this is the one for the calculator and you'll see that this contains the oops sorry I click on that involuntarily you'll see that this contains the three lines that we added and um, remember when we re uh, registered made a pull request uh, asking for permission to publish uh, version 107 we added these three lines, but then the registry itself downloaded the, the code for uh, the calculator and ran npm build on it and then uh, created all these files and made those available and also uh, pulled in the widget.json information here that we had inside of each one of the widgets and uh, put it here and uh, everything is now added in the in the widget registry so with this URL we're gonna go to oops gonna go here we are going to admin admin and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to content interactive components which is ingesting settings and we are going to paste that in here so this is where we're going to do the handshake between the widget registry and drupal that single url is what you uh, you'll use in Drupal. But I'm getting ahead of myself and uh, that's going to be a different video. Before we we wrap this up, uh, just make sure you get a good look at the config folder in here. Uh, so I talked how there are two environments and production. Uh, at some point after forking, you'll need to create a production uh, branch out of uh, sandbox and that's because uh, we have some configuration here in place to uh, allow different uh, allow differences for um, for sandbox and production so this is the kind of default configuration which is the uh, the one for sandbox and you'll see how we uh, we are publishing this to uh, to this URL so that is kind of the URL that you saw just a moment ago that I pasted in Drupal comes from here, uh, JS widgets GitHub IO. This is what GitHub Pages gives for me. But you could 
uh, you could jump into the CI and have that JSON file be posted in your server and upload it via FTP. So if you do that, then uh, if you don't use GitHub Pages to serve the widget registry uh, feed, then uh, you put it here. I do that, uh, so I'm keeping this configuration, but make sure you fix this for your case. Uh, so in, in my case, I'm under the JS Widgets organization, so that's why I have it here. And then this is just a nice convention for me, uh, the name of the repo, saying that this is the widget registry for the sandbox environment, because I'm going to have the production environment. And I'm going to show just this right now. If I go to production, I have here only the properties that I'm overriding. So here you can see how I have the uh, production environment, and the same for the uh, for where to save these in the in the file system while building. Um, that's it. Uh, if you want to take a look at the configuration, there should be comments explaining what's going on. But many of these will not be very relevant unless, as I said, you're doing something very custom, which is encouraged, of course, if you don't want to have GitHub pages serving your stuff, um, then you can just jump in here and make the changes and hopefully the widget registry can accommodate for, for it. So now I'm going to wrap up and uh, let's go through what we did. We explained what the rigid registry is. Uh, it's a compendium or a collection of JavaScript applications that are linked in the metadata registry.json. And when you want to publish something into the registry or unpublish, uh, you could also uh, request to go back version. Um, you make a pull request to this file and all the governance uh, that happens around around publishing and uh, modifying the registry happens through the git approval process then ci uh, sorry about that my widget uh, sorry my headset uh, keeps wanting to power off um then CI will take that version change, will detect that uh, we went from 6 to 7, and will recompile the example calculator to generate the metadata necessary and to upload the JavaScript and CSS assets that are necessary for that uh, particular widget. And also, uh, we'll create the JSON feed. And that's all the functional uh, requirements because that JSON feed is necessary for Drupal to be able to ingest or to embed those applications. But as a nice to have, as I said, they will uh, it will also create the catalog, which is a static page application that lets you navigate and uh, kind of manage this more easily. This is a nice to have a project manager look at it which is the st status um, of the of the widgets and just play with them there is a kind of a summary page uh, how to embed it in in html and then also a live preview uh, that will also if your widget takes in editorial input uh, in order to render it we need to make up uh, or to yeah, to to generate some input for it. So uh, it the this single page application will generate some random input for the the widgets, so they can be rendered with that random input, and we will we'll tell you here. And finally, we saw how. Let me go back. We saw how uh, by using two branches, sandbox and production, along with the Sandbox and production configuration files. Uh, you can have uh, environments on where to test your uh, JavaScript integrations, which is also very important uh, when it comes to QA. You wouldn't be just uh, 
pushing things to production without uh, having a proper look. Uh, that's it for now, and I will see. Uh, We'll see how, how this goes and how the Drupal video comes up together next. Ta-da!